All right. Here's All right. another example of trolling. I was making jokes about Ron Paul. He just had a stroke, right? And someone came at me yep. and they're like, oh, blah, blah, blah. You know, you're ugly. I hope you have a stroke. I hope you're in the hospital. And I just go, I just did have a stroke on your mom's face. So they came at me yep. and now they got put in their place. With a subpar. Um, I mean- I wasn't clever. You weren't, you weren't clever. Not particularly, no. Well, one of your things you do, which is interesting, I mean, I give you props in a sense, is you're willing to go farther than people expect you to. Yes, that's fun. Yeah. In fact, I'll probably edit out like half of this podcast because the, the thing you did, which she kept in, I should mention, is, uh, Michaela Peterson now has a podcast, which is nice. I guess, was it on her podcast? She was did? on mine. She was on yours. I, we did both, but this yeah. is when you're referring to when she was on mine. Yeah. She, she was on, yeah, right. And <laughs> you went right for the... <laughs> for the <laughs> so I, I'll tell you what it was, you don't have to yeah. paraphrase. So I opened up, I say, you know, she's Jordan Peterson's dad. And as many people know, Jordan, yeah. oh, sorry, yeah. da, he's her dad, yeah. She's had a long I issue with a uh, substance addiction. And I said to her, you're, you know, you're most famous for being, you know, Jordan Peterson's daughter. You know, many people, he's changed so many lives around the world. He's, and he's been such an enormous influence to me personally that I've started taking benzodiazepines recreationally. And she's like, oh my God, Michael, it's so horrible. Yeah, you because you pulled me in with this, because you're talking, I mean, you know, because he's going through a rough time now. She's going through just everything was just, you pulled me in emotionally. I was, was like, this is going to be the sweet, Mike it is going to be just this wonderful. And then just bam. So that's, 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 that was uh, props to you on that. It wasn't, whatever that is, that is an art form. Uh, when done well, it can be taken too far. My criticism is that that feels too good for some people. What do you, what do you mean? Uh, for, for Oh, they're too happy being irreverent because to yeah. show that they don't care about anything. That's another yeah. form of cynicism though. Right, so I, if you, because you think it's possible to be a troll and still be the, live life to its highest ideal in the Camus sense? I try, that's kind of my ideal. I, I, I believe it's not, I, it becomes a drug. I feel like that takes you, like I think love ultimately is, the way to experience like every moment of, of every day. You don't think that was an expression of, I honestly think, we, well, let's, let's, let's split hairs here because yeah. I think this, there's something of use here. I do think that me, I, I'm, me being able to make her laugh about this year of hell she was in yep. does create an element of love and connection between me and her. Yeah, but- I know she would say that. Yes, it wasn't that. It was what you said in combination with the sweetness everywhere else, the kindness. It's a very subtle thing, but like, it's like uh, some of the deepest connections we have with others is when we like mock them lovingly or- Yes, that, correct. But like there is stuff, there's kindness around that. Sometimes yes. not in words, but in like- Of course. Subtle things. Because it, it creates an air of familiar, uh, being familial. Like we're through this together. Like yeah. it's, yeah. Yeah, that's missing. That's very difficult to do on the internet. I agree with you. I that's, agree with you. That's why my like my general approach on the internet is to be uh, sim more like simple, less witty, and more like d dumbly loving. But that's kind. not your core competency, being witty. <laughs> uh, me? Yeah. I, I could be witty. You can be, but I'm saying that's not your core company. So I'm not saying you're bad at it, but I'm saying that's not where you go like organically, especially with strangers. I just feel like nobody's core competence on the internet is, uh, I guess if you want to bring love to the world, nobody's core competence is, given the current platforms, nobody's core competence is wit. It's very difficult to be witty on the internet without, while still communicating kindness. like. In I'll give you another example. In the same way that you can in physical space. I'll give you another example. Someone um, came at me and they were like, they give me a donation. People do this all the time. And they go, oh, um, like I started reading your books because of my wife and you know now we watch your shows together. Uh, I keep up the good work. And I go, what does her boyfriend think? So that is an example of wit and love because yeah. that person feels seen. 
I'm acknowledging them. Yeah. I'm also making a joke at their expense. We know it's a joke. Yeah, true. So I think when you point, and I good point, good point. language yeah. is often used in non-literal ways to cue emotional and connectivity. It's difficult, but you've- It's very uh, difficult. Uh, uh, what you've done is, is, is difficult to accomplish, but you've done it well. I mean, you do, like you did, you do been doing these live streams, which are nice that people give you a bunch of money and donations and stuff. And then you, you'll often like make fun of certain aspects of their questions and so yeah. on, but it's, all, it's always long. That's not from love, that is genuine annoyance because they yeah. ask me some really dumb questions. But they're still underlying, it's not even, like there's a kind person under yes. that, that's being communicated. That's interesting, but I don't know if I get that from your Twitter. I, I know I get that from the video, the, something about the face, something about like Yeah, of the course, it's much harder, the more, the more data, yeah. the more easy it is to convey emotion and subtlety. Absolutely. If you only have literally black and white letters, it's going to be, or whatever, white and black, if you have night mode, it's going to be a very different, it's much more limited information. Yeah. But th this is the fundamental thing is like. Let's know, here's another example. Like yeah. if they had access to my face, like a lot of times some people don't know who I am and they come at me, call me a Nazi anti-Semite, right? And I start talking about the Jews and just how terrible the Jews are. Now, all my audience knows I'm Jewish that I went to yeshiva. So they're sitting there laughing because this yeah. person's making ass of themselves. That person has no idea. But if there was video, then they would be like, okay, wait a minute, something's yeah. up. Yeah, something's up. I don't know. Uh, I think it's entertaining. I think it's fun, but I just, I don't think it's scalable. And ultimately, I'm trying to figure out this whole trolling thing because I think it's really destructive. I've been the outrage mob, the outrage mobs, the just the the dynamics of Twitter has been really bothering me. Okay, and I've been trying to figure out if we can try to build an an alternative to Twitter, perhaps, or try to encourage Twitter to be better. How to have nuanced, healthy conversations. Like the reason I talk about love isn't just for love's sake. It's just a good base from which to have difficult conversations. Like that's a good starting point. Because if you start, like I would argue that the kind of conversation you have on Twitter is fun, but it might not be a good starting point for a difficult nuanced conversation. Well, I'm not interested in having those conversations with most people. No, I know. But so I agree uh, with you. I'm but, not. I'm, your point is valid. Yes, but like I'm saying, so if we were trying to have a difficult, nuanced conversation about, say, race in America or policing, is there racism, institutional racism, or policing? Okay, there's uh, the only conversations that have been nuanced about it that I've heard is in the podcasting medium. I agree, which with is you. the magic of podcasting, which is great, but that that's. The downside of podcasting is it's a, a very small number of people. Even if it's in the thousands, it's still small. And then there's millions of people on social media and they're not having nuanced conversation at all. They're not capable of it. That's the difference in you. That's, they have no that's, minds. I believe they are. So that's there's the- There's no data that's and, and then both of us aren't being not scientific. You don't have data to support your worldview either. You're making the claim. Well, you are too. No, I'm not. If I'm looking at an object, the the, the claim that oh, it has broken. a mind. Well, no, what? <laughs> you're, no, your your claim is that people are fundamentally stupid. <laughs> we can do this. Are you a martial artist? Yes. <laughs> How does it feel? <laughs> I no, just but, judo on you. <laughs> yeah. <Just> judo. <laughs> but uh, you really don't think people are deep down like capable of being intelligent? No, like, not at all. <laughs> not, not deep down, not surface. I'm not joking. I'm not being tongue in cheek. I'm not being cynical. I do not at all, at all think they have this capacity. I'm gonna think because you're being so clear about it. You're not even. I'm gonna here's, have to here's think a, about that. You know that. why? I, I, here's here's a here's evidence for my position, not yeah. proof. And this is of course data that is of little use, but it's of interest. A lot of times when you have an audience as big as mine and people come at you, not only will people say the same thing, the same concept, they'll say the same concept in the same way. That is not a mind. Yeah, that's surface evidence. Um, you're saying this iceberg looks like this from the surface. Yeah. I'm saying there's an iceberg there that if challenged can uh, can rise to the occasion of deep thinking. And you're saying, nope. Nope, <laughs> it's just frozen water. <laughs> that's isn't that the Russian expression? Uh, that's ice cream. No, not marojne, at marojne. Doesn't it mean at like, like, like like no one's there? Actually, I don't know. Yeah, it means like, yeah. Yeah, mm. it's like thought. It means doop. 
Никого дома. Никого дома. Окей, well, uh, so you're challenging me to be a little more, more rigorous. I think I'll try I'm to I'm not prove... challenging you anything. I'm just saying... No, not challenging me, but like I'm challenging myself based okay. on what you're saying because I'd like to prove you wrong and find actual yeah. data to, to show you wrong. And I think I can, but uh, I would need to... Uh, get that data. That's funny you said I think I can when when they were working on my biography Ego and Hubris the title I had suggested was The Little Engine That Could But Shouldn't and <laughs> <laughs> they didn't like it. I think that's a great title. That's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of biographies, I mean one I read your book or listened to your book, listened to. There's an audio book for you, right? Yeah, I did yeah. the audio, yeah. Yeah. You you read it? My Golas, yes. Okay. So this was, this was a... Uh... I didn't do Yaron Brooks' voice in the book. I did all the different voices because he has a lisp and I didn't want to sound like I was making fun of him. Yeah, I I don't remember you reading it, but it was I was really enjoyed it. You. No, okay, it was good. It was like a year, <laughs> I, year and a half ago. This that I, I can prove. <laughs> <laughs>